wouldn't it be nice if in your 3D models, you can actually have aerial photography superimposed over the topo. Now, many of you who have been using ARCHICAD for a long time know that you used to be able to do this using SketchUp, bring in the, the, uh, the Google Earth, save it as a SketchUp file, then merge the file with ARCHICAD. It was great. It was really nice. And then Tremble, who bought SketchUp from Google, uh, they got a little greedy and they decided to force you to buy a pro subscription to SketchUp, which if you've got ARCHICAD and the Morph Tool, why the hell do you need SketchUp? No, you don't need it. And now you further don't need it. Hi, welcome back to the Colorblind Architect Does ARCHICAD. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a little trick to make your 3D models just a little bit nicer with overlaying the aerial photography over your 3D topo mesh. Now, quick warning, this does require you to create a topo mesh and hopefully you got a survey. Um, in this case, I got a survey for this project, very much well worth it because there's probably about 40, 50 feet of elevation change across the site. And so it was well worth it. Now, the first step that you're going to need is, of course, obtaining aerial photography. Now, this can be done in a few different ways. For me, this particular project, I used Apple Maps and just took a screenshot. Zoomed out really far. It was good enough to be able to see where all the Joshua trees were. This is out in the, the Joshua Tree Desert of California. So it we needed to make sure that we identified where all the Joshua trees were so that we could protect them. Now, once you have this screenshot, you save it into your folder and you're gonna need to bring it into ARCHICAD. Now, one of the first things you're gonna need to do is you need something for your 2D image. So in this case, what you can do is if you have this image um, already uh, saved somewhere, you can actually just take, let's say this is in the downloads folder, drag and drop it into your screen. We do need to scale it. Now, sometimes you, you can scale these um, with features on the picture that are easily measurable. Uh, sometimes it's a parking space. Sometimes it's a sidewalk, but you have to know what the actual size is. Fortunately for me on this one, I actually have the site survey and in the site survey, it actually does identify the corners of the lot and in the photo, it's relatively easy to identify where the project boundaries are based on uh, existing fencing on the neighbor's lot to the north. So what you do is you go to your floor plan, right click on worksheets uh, where I've saved this site survey. Well, okay, actually it's not working. Yay, lovely. Okay, something was active, so had to hit escape and try it again. So I've clicked on it, I've right clicked on it, and now I can say show as trace reference. And once I do that, now you can see the survey underneath. Okay, now in this survey, we're gonna then take this photo, I'm gonna drag and drop it into this view. Now you can see we've got this little tiny image here and it is first, it's not oriented the same way the rest of the image. Part of that is because I've already rotated this screen. So I'm going to go back to the zero at zero degrees. You'll see that the photograph is now off. So I'm just going to go ahead, command E, rotate. And then what I need to do is I need to match up something in the photograph. So I'm gonna zoom into the photograph. And I know that my lot is this one right here. So you can see there's evidence of the property boundary in the photo photograph right here. 
So I'm gonna take the corner of the street and the what is evident as the property boundary. I'm gonna go ahead, click there, and Command D to drag. And now I'm gonna drag it over here to the trace layer showing the survey below. And I'm gonna match it to that same corner. Now, the nice thing about this is now I can go up here to this top area and you see in the toolbar, we've got this resize command. It's also available here on edit, reshape, and it's under resize. And as you can see, it's also command K or on a Windows control K. Now, in this case, we're gonna define it graphically. Uh, you can do a, re a set resize ratio, but in this case, define graphically. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the same exact point that we used before. Okay, and then I'm going to find in the picture roughly where the property boundary is. And as you can see, um, the property boundaries for this particular subdivision appear to be right at the edges of the street. In this case, there's a Jeep road that runs through my client's site. So I'm gonna hold down shift and then stretch out so I can get kind of the top end of that. Now, what that does is that sets the, what we're gonna be clicking on next and scales it up to that. So then I can zoom on in to the survey point and it's actually gonna scale it up from about 25 feet to about 659 feet. But once I've done that, now you can see the photograph actually matches it. Now the next step, we can leave this here as a reference plane. Now, obviously we, we do need a topo and just to, just to help with the t showing how to do this, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the surface of this just because I've already set it up in this particular uh, project. Looks like, yeah, it's this one over here. And this particular topo, uh, this mesh that I've created here, I've already matched the topo and set the elevations for this. There's other tutorials on how to create a 3D mesh for a topo. So um, we're just gonna go here to various overrides and we're just gonna um, change this to general for the, the top surface because in the 3D, I wanna show you how to do that. So this next step though, assuming that we've drawn this topo to the same exact size, and yes, you'll draw it to the same exact size as the picture that we just did, okay? And so now you can see that our topo is actually over the photograph that we've just positioned. Now, this is the next really important thing we need to measure one of the sides of the photograph. So we're gonna measure with the M tool. So measure, so just keyboard and you hit the M key and that brings this little measuring tool. Uh, the other way to get there is there's uh, this icon here on the toolbar with the measuring tape. We're gonna click there and then we're gonna click here. And as you can see, that's 3,425 feet, three in, seven sixteenths inches. Now I know you metric people, you're probably looking at me thinking, you Americans are stupid, still using this stupid feet inches thing. Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. Uh, what we're gonna do is just so that it's easier for me to remember that, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a quick screen capture. Oh, dang it, it's not gonna work. So let's try that again. So this is just a good mental note. So you're gonna have, actually, no, you can select the photograph, that's right. So now we're just gonna select the photograph. And as you can see, 
we've got this scale factor. So I'm gonna just go ahead and command C that so it's in memory. And now we're gonna to go to options, surfaces, because now we're gonna create the surface map for the uh, aerial photo uh, pho photograph. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate whitewash. That's good enough. And we're just gonna call this site aerial photo. Click okay. And now we need to bring in a picture. So down here under texture, we're gonna go ahead and click browse. We're gonna add, and I'm gonna go to my downloads folder, which is where I had that screenshot saved. I'm gonna click open. Okay, and you can see that we actually have it here under the embedded library already. Um, obviously I've already imported this. So we're gonna click on that. That's gonna bring that into the surface editor. And now what we wanna do is we wanna change this to the original proportion, because we wanna make sure that when we add the uh, size for the length, that it also updates the height. So now we're gonna select the text in the length parameter. We're gonna do Command V or on Windows Control V and paste that value in there. And as you can see, it updates the vertical as well to match what it should be. And then we can go ahead and click OK. OK, now once we're done, we can select the mesh and we can go to the surface and make sure the top surface is overridden. And we're going to change that to site aerial photo. We're going to go with the new one that we just selected just hoping that it's a little bit off so that I'm forced to show you how to you know, align it. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into our 3D view. Now, we wanna verify that the site is actually looking correct. And as you can see, it's a little bit off. It's just ever so slightly off. So what we need to do is we, we're gonna select this topo and we're gonna go to document, creative imaging, align 3D texture, set origin. And then we're just gonna click on one corner. That should align it. Um, and that should be pretty dang close. And as you can see, I've actually got the topo going up, but it's mapping the surface texture of the aerial photography. And it makes the site look a lot more realistic because it's an actual realistic photo from the sky. Um, now, one of the ways that you can improve this even more is you can actually use a drone and do your own aerial photographs. Um, I am going to show how to do that on another episode and then how to stitch that together and put that in here as well. But in this case, like I said, this is just satellite imagery off of Apple Maps. You can use Google Maps, whatever. Um, but it's a nice little handy little trick and hopefully it was helpful for you. And with that said, I'm gonna bid you adieu for another day. I'm the Colorblind Architect doing ArchiCAD. Peace out.